This is highly requested, a Mimikyu guide. I really hope you get some value out of this. We're going through the nuances and the details of how you want to use Mimikyu with both builds and then analyzing the gameplay of taking Mimikyu in the top lane and your macro plays with using this Pokemon. Guys, if you get some value, drop a like, consider subscribing, and good luck on the solo queue. Okay, first things first with Mimikyu, let's talk about the passive ability. So you'll see that on, uh, on his name, he's kind of got this ability, it's ready to go, it's called Disguise. Now, if you're familiar with a bit of VGC, um, it pretty much means you need to attack this Pokemon to put it in busted form. Now, when you are in Disguise form and you take a big chunk of damage first, you will break that Disguise form, but instead of taking a whole bunch of damage, you're going to be taking 5% of the HP that you have remaining. So if you're on full health, you take 5% of your HP, and then you become like, you become immune to taking damage. Like you can still get stunned and everything, but that's only for half a second. So it's like you're going from one form to another. So it's pretty good, honestly, for engaging a fight if you've got a full heal, that um, making sure you've got a, that ability active, right? Um, now it's got a cooldown of 50 seconds and the enemy that busts you, it's like they get a marker on them and you can do a whole bunch of like increased damage and you run towards them quicker and stuff like that. So the general gist of this ability is you see now that I've been hit, um, there's a marker on it's like above their name it's got like you know little um yeah it's like a shining light and now the um the symbol around my name is gone okay so please stop attacking me i don't want to die um so that symbol is gone and you can see that uh in the bottom right hand corner of the screen that ability has gone on cooldown um and you will get that back relatively shortly now you can take this Pokemon to the jungle or to the top lane. I would probably take it best to the jungle just because it comes online best at level five. So let's talk about those level five skills. You've got the option of play rough or shadow claw. Now I'm gonna talk about play rough because I, uh, sorry, shadow claw, because I just think it is the better skill. So you notice um, the skill itself, you've got like a double claw, right? And you can notice that you do a whole bunch of hitting there, right? You can do a whole bunch of hitting there. It's really good, right? Now, you'll notice also, if we just look at the symbol now, it's got a single marker, but the moment that you land a basic, it gets uh, like a double marker. And this is how Shadow Claw works, right? I'm gonna turn cooldowns off just so you can see this, right? Um, in the bottom corner of the screen, you can see a little counter, right? Now it's up to four, you can use Shadow Claw, and that will indicate the number of additional hits Shadow Claw will do. So here you can see you do one hit, but now if I get that counter up to four, It'll do one, two, three, four, five hits, right? So that's how Shadow Claw works. You wanna make sure you've got those stacks ready to go. Now, in order to get those hits up, you use your basics. Now your two unboosted autos have got a close range and then you can see extended. So it's like one, two, and then the extended range hits them twice. So three, four, and you can see the marker goes up to four and then you can engage on the Shadow Claw. Now, when you use Shadow Claw, your next hit is a boosted auto, right? See how it's a next is a boosted auto? And it's got about the same range as Shadow Claw. So you want to keep enemies at this kind of like kite distance here of Shadow Claw. And you want to make sure that you've got your basics ready to go, right? Bang, 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 bang. And then every time you'll notice the cooldown of Shadow Claw seems to be going pretty quickly, right? It's every time you land a basic after you use Shadow Claw, it reduces the cooldown by one second. And if you put this in conjunction with your blue buff, you're gonna see how quickly these cooldowns happen here. All right? So you notice here, it's like bang, and then we use it, and we get another basic attack. It's almost pretty much instantly ready to go. So using Mimikyu in the jungle is honestly pretty good um, because you get that blue buff, but also you come to that lane in the top or the bottom lane for the first gank at level uh, five. So you've got that skill, which is very, very good. Now your other skill option there is using play rough now play rough you pretty much just dive on uh like you know an enemy and you're invincible throughout that duration and you can dash in a particular direction using your left joy con so you can dash to the upward direction um let me just turn cooldowns off here or you can dash in the bottom direction you can dash in a particular direction um after that all happens right now it's got a longer cooldown um than shadow claw honestly play rough play rough was really obnoxious um but i think yeah the the best move to use is definitely Shadow Claw. Now, when you hit level seven, you get your next skill. I would probably be going Play Rough and I would be going Shadow Sneak. I just don't think um, until we see a different way of Trick Room getting used or if someone wants to get very creative with how it gets uh, used, I just don't see it doing any utility uh, whatsoever. Now, Shadow Sneak, you'll see you will increase the distance that you can dash and it goes onto an enemy, right? And when you hit that enemy, 
you do some damage and then when you kill them um, that skill goes on cooldown so shadow sneak goes on cooldown so it's very much about executing the enemy and dashing through some walls so you'll extend the distance each time you go through a wall or a patch of grass so this is where the skill cap of this move comes in and honestly i'm i'm actually like not even good at this skill right there are some people who are really good at it um there's a couple just i guess key points here to note with this skill and it's that if you're in the mid, you can land on the enemy blue buff, right? You can dash, I mean, once we get him out of the way, uh, you can land on their blue buff, so you can dash through there and go all the way here. Um, that's one thing that's nice with Mimikyu. Um, and you can only do that with blue buff, you can't do that with your red buff, right? It won't actually make the distance there. Um, I think, yeah, even if you go this way here, um, yeah, you still can't hit, right? So blue buff is the buff that you can hit not the red buff if you're trying to dash into the enemy mid or get out of your own um, middle into your own jungle um you can hit the rayquaza from either side of the wall which is uh, honestly it's pretty good um but ultimately you're using this skill to dash onto either farm to you know because you can hit the farm and you can dash onto them but it's essentially it's a really good dive and gauge onto the enemies right and you'll notice here like you've got to spend some time in, in practice mode and realize what you can hit right if you really want to hit this apom here I, I can't hit him just by doing that but if i if i want to make sure i hit him i've got to make sure i go through um like this wall here and this patch of grass and honestly it can it can extend pretty far if you notice but it's fairly sensitive to the joysticks there's a lot of skill cap there right so you can dash on uh, and you can do some pretty good stuff there right um the top objectives you can hit um, this one, I believe you've got to be in this bush, um, and I think you can just hit the tip of it if you're going through the two. Um, no, you can't. Oh, no, you can. Yeah, I thought you could. Yeah, so you get, like, just the tip of it, so you've got to time it um, pretty well. And if we go to the bottom objective, right, so these are just key points to be able to hit. Um, you can go to the bottom objective, and you can hit it from here, um, which is nice. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're going through many, many walls um, to be hitting stuff there. Um, it's also good to note that if you're trying to engage in the Rayquaza pit, um, this is where Mimikyu can be uh, pretty tough to manage here. Um, you can be kind of floating around here and you can hit them in their choke point there. Or you can dash directly onto them through that choke point and you're almost hitting like every bit of the grass there. So you've got to be very, very careful. And then, like, look how far away you are with the Mimikyu, right? So you, you're doing some pretty good stuff there. Um, Mimikyu does actually like to have control of this bush as well. So again like look at how far mimic you can dash from this part of the map here you're controlling the map there you don't really get a whole bunch in the top lane you can kind of sort someone out as they're coming through this section here from the bush um and you can also hit them when they're engaging from the top side there so you do get quite a bit of map control around the rayquaza um with mimic you and also if we just go over to our side of the map here um you can engage from like as far back as this blue buff onto the enemy when they're diving in your area as well, right? You can hit them in this bottom L. So it's very, very skill cap. You need to know where you're standing. Guys, do some of this in practice mode and you're going to get some phenomenal value out of this. Now, if we talk about the Unite move, the Unite move is very similar to Slowbro, right? Except it does a little bit more damage. Um, but yeah, you got, you're an all-arounder, right? You're not a tank. So when you dive onto the enemy, you get quite a big amount of shield and you're pretty much making them like you know, they're going to get smashed, right? Well, during that, you know, they're locked, right? Um, so it's really good at picking up a dive mod because you can dive on them and then they're stuck and your team can surround them and then you can absolutely smash them from that point there. Um, similar to Play Rough, you can actually dash in a particular direction. And I do want to talk about this because I know it confuses quite a few new players here. Um, let me just get up some extra levels. When you use Play Rough, you are like invincible. You can't take any damage. But when you are in your Unite move, you can take damage, right? The, the enemy can smash you. You're unstoppable. You're not invincible. So understand the difference between those two there, right? So the two builds that you can consider using is Shadow Sneak and Play Rough and um, Shadow Sneak and Shadow Claw. Those are the two builds that you could potentially use with this character. So on the screen, we've got the build for Mimikyu. Now, I like using Mimikyu with an eject button over a full heal, but you, yeah, generally, this is a pretty aggressive Pokemon. You don't want to be running defensive items on him, so to speak. It's It works best with a supporter, so having a Clefable is absolutely amazing in solo queue. Um, however, that's the build. Now, 
this Pokemon is most optimal to take to the jungle and then ganking a lane at level 5 because you, you've got quite a valuable gank. Uh, however, in this lane, uh, in this game, um, my Absol decided that he wanted to be the jungler, which is totally fine. Um, you know, you don't have to be the jungler every single game, guys. You, you can go to a lane and you can do well in your lane, okay? It's, it's, it's actually harder to play in lane than in jungle, in my opinion, to be successful, right? There's more contested experience in lane. Um, a jungler does make a big difference. Okay, so you want to go for those stacks, right? First things first. However, if both of the enemy team are jumping onto you when you're trying to stack... Now, thankfully, I had this Trevenant here with me because I don't think I was getting six, six money in here, right? So we got it in, which is great. But if both of them are going to kill you and you don't have a healer in the top lane, don't fight this close to their pad because you, you're at, like, if they're pushed this far back, you can go back here and take this farm. That's totally fine, right? There's contested and contested up for grabs. If you try and risk their farm when you're lower on HP than them at their pad, you're risking not only a jungler just coming up and doing a sneaky, very quick gank after he does his red buff or something like that, um, you're also risking not securing the farm and then dying. So you risk actually getting nothing at all, right? So you'll notice here, I run back straight away. I don't even want to take the contested and then the enemy over push. So the value they, they get from the bow toy, um, which, you know, which is great, but our Trevenant actually got that top farm there, which is awesome, right? So um, at this stage here, they have only got the contested piece of farm and we've got, you know, two stacks there, one stack here, and now I'm getting this back farm. So... Um, you want to play your lane smart, right? You don't have to play super aggressive every single time. Now, remember, contested experience um, before your own experience. So that's why I take this APOM here um, before I, oh, you know, whatever it's called, Bunny, Bunnel B, Bunnel, Bunnel BB, um, before I take, uh, you know, my back one, right? So we've done pretty well here. Um, because we've got this much money, we're probably not going to be able to stack. Um, that's not, you know, that, that's not a huge deal, right? Because now we've probably got an experience lead here. Um, and just a quick huge shout out to the Trevenant for using an EXP share. Uh, that's phenomenal from him. Okay, so you can see we've got the level lead because we've got the experience from scoring. We've secured the majority of the farm and lane and we've got an EXP share. Um, we're pretty much an entire level over both of them, which is very good. And then if we go down to the bottom lane, um, it looks like their Crustal killed our Absol, which is r really bad before the bees even came up. So they've got two players with buffs, and our Gengar's caught out of position. So bottom lane is literally screwed. So that pretty much means you, you yeah, you know, it's not good for them, right? Um, however, you'll see I go in with the engage, and because we have got Shadow Claw, we want to be getting the, you get the most value of Shadow Claw the earlier in the game, right? Because it's such a strong skill. So you'll notice I dive onto the enemies, right? Um, and, and that's all I'm doing here, because if they stay and contest these bees, they're going to die, right? So you can see these eject back, they go on their pad there, and I'm happy to push them as far back as possible. And um, because we push them that far back, we're able to get the 17 score in. And you just keep bullying this lane, right? Because if they try and stop you, you, you're so strong, right? As soon as you get... If you get Shadow Claw sooner, you are incredibly strong. Now, this is where having that understanding of taking contested experience first is, is very helpful, right? We could take this Bow Toy. However, they've got an APOM here and we're ahead in lane. So there's no point us giving up this farm for free. Because with how the catch-up modifiers work... Um, this, well, I mean, he probably has, like, the tiniest catch-up modifier this early in the game. However, it's still a little bit, right? So he'll get a little bit of extra experience on this APOM, um, you know, uh, compared to us on this Bow Toy. So I, I recognize that, and I don't want to give that up for free, right? So, and it's also an extra stack if I can get it. So I do the Shadow Claw damage. I was actually fortunate enough to get it through, um, you know, the Iron Defense skill or whatever it is. Because um, that does quite a lot of burst damage, right? We end up taking both of their farm there, which is honestly huge. Um, and that just means we get some extra stacks in. And now we're level 7 um, by the stage here. Now, I noticed that their junglers come up here instead of going to this middle farm. Um, and I'm actually ahead. So I'm, I'm actually not bothered by him, right? I've got Shadow Sneak. So I can engage on him. And that's really what I'm trying to do, right? I'm sitting in this bush knowing that he can come through here. And um, yeah, that's what I go for. I, I land my Shadow Sneak on him so I can dash on him. And yeah, I, you know, continue to get the resets. Um, and so life is good, right? Life is going well in this lane. We've definitely won top lane. They still have a, you know, they've just got a Blissey now that that Bow is dead. And their Metagross is looking for like any farm on the map, which is good, uh, which is really good because we've won top lane really well there. Um, bottom lane, however, is, well, I mean, for, you know, actually, how have they not scored that much? The Crustle's running a running a mark, right? He's level 7 at this stage. That's really strong. 
Um, you know, but, you know, I feel like I can take him on. Um, I eject after him. Now, the stun from the Pikachu actually stopped the Shadow Claw from launching off and getting that kill onto the Crustle. So, he actually saved him with a huge Thunderbolt there, which is really, really good play from the Pikachu. Props to him, right? So, we rotate down. Um, after, you know, clearing out that middle section, getting a kill. And at this stage, I noticed that this lane's fairly under control. Our junglers come down. We've pushed them back here. So I'm kind of just praying that our team doesn't play stupidly aggressively and lose lane. Um, and I noticed that our Trevenant's getting pushed back on his lane. And I can dash through walls with the Shadow Sneak um, onto our pad if, you know, if I really need to. Um, so... Yeah, we're going pretty well here, right? We're level 8, we're highest level on the map, which is which is really good. Um, I noticed that they're trying to run away, and then this is the power of Shadow Sneak. You can just dive on them. It's fantastic dive potential. And you'll notice um, when I've got the level lead, I am all I'm trying to do is get the KO onto the enemy, right? Jarable's pretty obnoxious skill. Um, but yeah, our Trevenant does really well to pick up 21 money to not break, recognizing the goal zone's on 22, and then we get a huge uh, break. And we've got the Unite move heading down to the bottom lane, right? So... I'm definitely valuing going to this bottom lane here um, because with one top, right? A Trevenant can sit here and do this objective, whatever. He can stop them from scoring. I don't necessarily rate that play. Um, their Metagross is making the most correct play here to try and become a Metagross as quickly as possible because he can be very scary when he's a Metagross. Uh, their Pikachus decide to rotate down with a Blissey and their jungler. So they're playing fairly aggressively on pad here and we've only got a, a Blissey. Um, our jungler is doing the Baltoy and our Gengar is respawning right so it looks like they need some help in the bottom lane which is i'm rotating down in a way that i'm going onto my pad um i actually catch out the dragapult i don't know why he was floating there away from his team that's probably just pretty bad play um and then we get another shadow sneak engage there and now at this stage i notice that the crustle has a unite move and i'm like just stun locked there and i die right and you know it's more like what the heck how does a crustle get a unite move from this early in the game um, but sometimes that's what happens when, when your lane will lose that badly. Um, so unfortunately that's what's happened there. Uh, Absol's doing a decent job at, you know, kiting around him, but their Pikachu cleans him up and now their Pikachu's got the Unite move. Um, so really at this stage, our Trevenant has continued to win top, which is good. Um, he'll be able to sustain the Metagross, which is great. And yeah, we're, all we're trying to do is maintain levels, right? We're trying to maintain levels, we're trying to stay ahead, we're trying to get objectives, we're trying to win fights. Um, so I get the engage on the Pikachu there, and um, we get the kill on him, and then I notice that their cross was doing the objective, so I just want to launch off my Unite move as quickly as possible while I've got it, and we're able to get two big kills there, and now we are just cleaning up that objective at this point here, right? Make sure you're not getting hit by these skills, and yeah, get the reset if you, if you need to. Um, and yeah, so I noticed this goal zone two, and we're able to get another big overcap on this goal zone as well, which is fantastic. Um, and then we dive on the Pikachu, we kill him, and you'll notice that you can really get some good resets, because when you get a kill with that Shadow Sneak on that target, whether it's farm or whether it's an enemy, um, you will that, that skill will go on cooldown, which is really, really valuable, right? So it's really, really good. Um, and I'm glad our team has this level of awareness to continue to push. Um, I want to just keep playing as aggressively as I possibly can. Um, you can see I'm just like diving on them, um, but then I eject to get out because I noticed that our team has gone away. Um, and so I'm just floating here with Gengar, and I noticed that he pops his Unite move, so he's probably looking to engage um, after the Blissey's United. And I think that's pretty good play, so we wait for the Blissey Unite move to like be fully up, and then we dive and engage on them. Um, so I'm glad I stuck around there with the Gengar, right? You know, it's, it feels a little bit over the top, but now it's the five minute mark and you can see we're both calling retreat saying they can just jump from their jump pad. So now we've scored as much as we possibly can on their tier twos. And you can see by winning early, um, we're able to get a score lead of about 200. So that's really, really good. So for the rest of the five minutes, we're looking to suffocate as much experience from the enemy team. Um, if we go into their middle area, not only can we take their farm, but we also know when it's going to be respawning next. Um, so that gives us a pretty good indicator of when we can be going um, on that side of the map again. So things are looking pretty good for us, right? Um, and you can see that's exactly what I'm trying to do, right? I could go ahead and take this middle farm here. I could go and take this bow toy. But I think it's probably best play to just go and take their farm, right? Because if they don't have any farm here, then they've got to extend further onto our side of the map. Um, which makes them engage in a team fight if they want to get any of that experience. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, the Dragapult uses that skill that makes him go invisible, so I actually couldn't see him there to, to finish him off, which is a little bit frustrating. But you can see on these frail Pokemon, if you dive on them, um, you're very, very valuable. Right now, it honestly, it's 
it's down to just the skill shot, whether or not you're hitting some of these um, moves, uh, you know, on, on these guys with your Shadow Sneak. Um, unfortunately, our team decides to dive onto the enemy team there. We get some kills, and we're able to break this goal zone here, which is fantastic. Um, which means that this Regilecki uh, will now be walking through to their base, and we're not going to use that to score in their base. We're going to use it to take as much farm as possible. So... Um, you can see we use a Shadow Snake to dive on there. Um, you know, it's unnecessary in that situation, but, you know, it's just cool practice. And, yeah, this stage, we I notice that Dragpot's scoring. We really don't care. It's such a small score. It just means that they've got less people on this side of the map so we can suffocate their experience further. Um, I'm just floating through. I'm making sure I'm staying with the Absol. Uh, you know, our Gengar's staying behind our Trevenant, so things are looking good here. I don't necessarily agree with them doing this play here. I think it's very risky to try and push this Reggie in. Um, because they've got Unite moves that they could potentially use, and they're on their main pad. Um, which at this stage, if they're getting kills on us, we are giving them a chance to get back into the game. If we just let them deal with this Regilecki on base, um, we can just take all of their farm, right? All of it, and then run away as quickly as possible. I think, yeah, we can score down here knowing that we've got Vision up here. Like, I would not be going for this score if these two guys weren't here but because they're there with the reggie that means that they've got to have a lot more resource to defend this and me putting in 20 points is probably the least of their worries when there's a potential you know 80 points going into their main base so that's why i decide to i put a 20 in here and then our clefe will puts in a 25 and yeah things are just not looking really good for the enemy team here unfortunately um you know they're, they're going a bit nuts here but i think you know gengar's popped his unite move um but yeah ultimately i think they gave up just a little bit too much experience there. Like for 45 score to get in that bottom lane, um, yeah, I, th I, I, I think it's I think it's greedy personally. Um, Absol makes a good play there. He decides to mow up this farm. We take this objective down bottom, and yeah, we just continue to take any contested farm guys. Right? It's take the contested farm before you take your own. Honestly, it's a pretty straightforward Pokemon to play. Um, it's going to get a little bit more complicated in a minute when we are talking about the Rayquaza. Um, you know, however, it's it's yeah, it's fairly simple. Land your Shadow Sneak, um, engage with your Basic, and then use Shadow Claw, and then rinse and repeat. Right, Basic Shadow Claw, Basic Shadow Claw. So it's um, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so you know, it, and, and if you miss the sh the Shadow Sneak like I did there, it's got quite a large cooldown. So you know, it's again, it's a skill shot, right? And by no means am I like excellent with this Pokemon. I'm honestly fairly new with Mimikyu, but it's super strong, especially in your solo queue game. So it can do some really really good stuff. Again. I think like, I'm calling retreat. I just think this is super greedy. A Gengar is just funneling experience into their team. Look at how much experience they get here, right? He, he almost goes up a whole level there, right? We, they do go up like a whole level there. They get like, you know, two or three levels combined as a team by, by doing that. So I think it's super greedy. Um, and I was hoping to get aggressive positioning at Rayquaza, but because their team got a kill, they're now in a 5v4 situation with extra experience, so we have to base and, and reposition, which is super frustrating, right? We even could have been up here as a team to take this Regilecki in, in, in 7 seconds. Um, because look at it, well, their team probably would have been more on top of it, but they recognize they got a kill on our tank, so not a whole lot we can do there. Now, when you're playing this Ray fight as a Mimikyu, right? Um, you want to maintain vision on this top side. Remember, you can, you've got a lot of distance with this Shadow Sneak. So really, you're maintaining vision on enemy... Like, this is goal zone to defend, so I can get there pretty quickly with the Shadow Sneak. Um, and if they are running through from this top side, we know that they're running through from this top side. And if they're playing on the top side of the Rayquaza, we can get there relatively quickly. And if our team goes in from the bottom side, we can use, our, use Shadow Sneak to engage over the wall to get them in this whole area here. So... You definitely want to be playing Mimikyu from the top side, especially if you've won your top lane for the entire game. You just want to maintain that vision, um, maintain that resource up in that top lane, which is your Flux Zone, and that shielding and healing on the base. And yeah, so we're going to see how this 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 unfolds here, right? We've got vision on the Crustle. He's got vision on me. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Um, and you can see this is where our team positions here. Unfortunately, Gengar is um, slowly making his way into the Rayquaza. Uh, Absol's trying to hit 15, which he does, which is absolutely huge. Um, so now at this stage, I'm more or less just floating here. I'm not going too far on their side of the map without the vision of their team, because if I overextend and they fully dive on me, um, I'll be putting my team in a 5v4 situation, which is really, really bad. So we're waiting for this Trevenant to engage here. And you can see 
He's probably honestly overextended considering that our team's not with him. Um, Gengar's kind of just floating with me. Um, you know, so honestly, the Trevenant's doing his job really, really well. Um, again, we notice here that the, the Gengar and I are playing from top side, and I notice that our team is like really engaging down here. So I decide that I notice that Gengar's kind of running away for, for whatever reason. I'm trying to get a hold of this um, Dragapult here. If I can land a Shadow Sneak on him to get the reset, because I know I'll kill him if I land him. So if I just dash onto him, kill, and then I can dash through here and continue that journey. So that's really what I'm trying to do there. Um, and I, I, I land a Shadow Sneak on him. I get myself right involved in the in the fight there. Um, I dash out of the uh, of the, you know, the rock area after using that Unite move, getting a huge shield, and notice that I'm kiting um, from a distance with that Shadow Claw. I don't want to get too close to the enemies, um, and so we're able to get quite a lot of damage off there. Um, fortunately, our team wins that team fight, and yeah, at, at this stage, I'm calling Retreat. There's no reason why we need to rip this Rayquaza. We've won the game from the beginning. Um, this game is, you know, they have to now win a refight, um, which is, you know, they, they potentially could. Um, or they have to rip the Rayquaza. So I don't really know why they're Dragapult sitting in the bush. Like, honestly, this game's probably mostly won so strongly on our team because of their Dragapult not playing very well in his particular role. Like, he's only level 12, the Crustle's level 14, so um, he's probably let his team down as an auto attacker. And as well, that positioning is, is really, really poor. He should probably be up at the top side there. Um, you know, Gengar's defending. Again, I'm just playing from top side and I'm looking to do that same engage with Mimikyu, right? So I notice there's a Pikachu there. I really want to land my skill on the Pikachu. Um, I, you know, look at the distance that you can get with that Shadow Sneak, right? It's really, really good. Um, unfortunately, you know, the Absol's got to back out there. And at this stage, there's 30 seconds left in the match. If we're able to, you know, even get two kills, um, we've pretty much won the game. We're like, we're pretty much won the game because they don't have the time to rip Rayquaza and, you know, secure it and then get all their score in. So, um, the Crustle gets a hold of me there. He actually kills me. Um, you know, good for him. Um, he doesn't have the money to go and finish off there. The Gengar's doing, you know, some decent stuff. Our whole team's collided on their, uh, on their Metagross. The Metagross done really well, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, I think for the enemy team, their Dragapult just didn't do his job properly. He goes down there and because we were ahead on score, um, all we really had to do was maintain the, yeah, the positioning at the Rayquaza Pit. We didn't even need to touch it because we knew we were so far ahead. And yeah, Trevenant just goes to score to push the enemies back. So yeah, we win the game there. And as you can see with the damage numbers, this is taking a Mimikyu to the top lane. We've got quite a lot of successful kill involvement. So that's uh, 12 kills and 9 assists. And uh, we're able to dish out quite a lot of damage. And we were taking quite a bit of damage as well. So generally, that's what you want to be doing um, with Mimikyu. You're a brawler, you're getting into the action. So you should have some pretty high damage numbers across the board. But you also want those damage numbers to reflect on successful kill involvements. Because if you're dealing 100k, but taking, you know, 80k, you're only getting three successful kill involvements. All that means is that you're going in to fights and you're not successful in those fights so you need to make sure that those numbers are actually reflecting successful outcomes.